Welcome to Big Monday, presented by Boost Mobile. It is a turbocharged crowd at the Corbett Sports Center, affectionately known as Club Corbett. One of the best atmospheres in all of college basketball. They're extra hyped tonight. North Carolina Central and North Carolina A&T are sworn rivals. They're also two of the best teams in the MEAC, and we're getting a potential conference championship preview tonight. And Ishraf alongside former Baylor star King McClure. We were told we're going to see things tonight you don't see in a basketball game. Look, I don't know about you. But I am ready for it. But what I'm even more ready for is these players that we're about to watch on this court. Yeah, we, we got a DJ in the house. We have pregame hustle and flow, in-game hustle and flow. And there's going to be serious hustle and flow on the court. Three potential MEAC players of the year. Two that I like to highlight. First, Jabri Blunt. Averaging 20 points per game, 10 rebounds per game. He is an absolute dog down low. Second, Ronald Jackson. This matchup is going to be crazy. He's averaging 15 points per game, 13 rebounds in conference. This matchup will be something that you will not want to miss at home. The first of two meetings between these two. NC Central has won five in a row to vault to the top of the MEAC standings. North Carolina A&T was atop the MEAC for most of the season. They're coming off back-to-back -back road losses. But this place, it's one of the best home court atmospheres and the best home court arena in the MEAC. Yeah, forget the MEAC. We're talking about the whole country. No, we're talking to the SID. He said that this place is a top 10, top 15 home court advantage, according to Ken Palm. That is impressive. Many of you may not have seen a game here. And what you see in the stands and the histrionics in the stands, th that's almost as good as what you'll be seeing on the floor. Yes, we will definitely be in for a show on and off the court. Dwayne Gladden, Steve Anderson, and Mott Lee are the officials today as we're about set to get underway. And North Carolina a &T, the Aggies in the golden blue control the opening tip. NC Central in the road black uniforms and a false start. The clock did not start. NC Central has been the class of this conference of late. They've won three straight league titles. They've been to the NCAA tournament three years in a row and four of the last six. For North Carolina a and they're trying to get where NC Central is. Definitely. You definitely see Coach Moten has done a great job with this program. He's probably one of the most underrated coaches in the country, and we're going to talk about why he's so good at what he does later on. But this guy has done, he's done a special job with this program. Lavelle Moten in his 11th season as the head coach at NC Central. And already an early stoppage. And they're trying to get the clock right. We had a great pregame conversation with Lavelle Moten, who you know, was telling us that you don't worry about success, you worry about being valuable. He talked about the day you're born and the day you die, those are just dates. The dash in between, that's what matters, what you do. And he's got a great story, a young man who grew up in the projects, grew up in a very rough part of Raleigh, was able to make something of himself was a great player at NC Central, and now he's become one of the great head coaches in this league. Yeah, listening to him pregame, just listening to him talk. You know, I'm, I'm a young man, I'm 23 years old. He's somebody who inspired me. I met the guy the first time today, talked to him for maybe about five to 10 minutes, and I was inspired by his story. Online, looking at his TED talk, I normally don't watch videos like that, but the first two minutes had me intrigued. It got my attention from start to finish. I watched the whole 19 minutes. And we're going to show you bits and pieces from his TED Talks, which is about his grandmother. You saw Lavelle Moten, poetry in Moten, as he was called when he played at NC Central. 
one of the great scores in school history and uh, he's had his challenges this year the eagles have had guys in and out of the lineup cj kaiser who have been playing well missed the last two games randy miller was their top returning scorer He's probably done for the season with a foot injury. Hasn't played since December. Yeah, but it all starts from your head coach. Your head coach, the way he's able to get his guys to still be able to play game in, game out, despite who's in the lineup and who's not, speaks a lot about him and how he runs his program. I keep talking to coaches after coaches in this conference. Coaches at Morgan State, even a coach at A&T said, the reason why they're so good is because of the culture that he's built. And you can tell that every guy who plays for him understands the culture and knows what to bring every night. You played at Baylor. Describe what a winning culture looks like. A winning culture looks like coming to practice every day, working as hard as you possibly can, doing extra. You know, Coach Bowden said a lot of guys, they'll do what he asks, and they think that's enough. He said, no, that's not enough. You're just doing what he asked. So... What you should be doing is more, do extra. That's what a winning culture like. That's what it, that's what winning looks like. Doing more, not doing just the minimum, doing as much as you possibly can, diving on the floor, diving for loose balls, everything. That's what a winning culture looks like. Club Corbett had its stand shoes on. Doesn't matter if there was a clock issue. They self-entertain in the stands. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm staying focused, man. Staying focused. <laughs> Trying to call this game. <laughs> as much action is going on tonight. All right, here we go. Five seconds off the clock. Aggies ball. And the point guard, Cameron Langley, one of the best mid-major point guards in the country. Top ten nationally at almost seven assists a game. Yeah, kid, we didn't highlight at the open, but this kid, don't get a twist. This kid is elite. Last six games, averaged 14 points per game, 10 assists per game. One of the best passers in, matter of fact, all college basketball, honestly. And he is the engine that makes the Aggies go. Andre Jackson way off with that shot. And here comes NC Central. Jordan Perkins at the controls, getting the start at point guard. Second in assists in the league behind only Langley. Down low, a turnover, and here come the Aggies. They can run. A good setting to pick. The lob up top for Quay Parker, a YouTube dunking sensation. That is what Langley does. Langley gets in the paint and is always looking to find the open man. That time, he found Quay Parker for the monster dunk. And we get an offensive foul on Perkins. Cam Langley coming down the lane, able to find a slashing Quay Parker. You might see that a lot tonight, people. The foul's going to be on Justin Watley on the illegal screen. Big concern for NC Central was Langley. They said we'd like to make him a score. Second possession for the Aggies. And they saw what Langley can do as the maestro. Looking for Hager down low. He gets tied up. Jump ball is the call. Possession arrow, NC Central. Yeah, when you, when you have a guy like Langley, you're playing against him. The thing that Coach Moten kept talking about was he'll score 12 points, but then he'll also get 10 assists. So really, that's more like 20. That's more, and kind of in three, that's more like 25. And then on top of that, if you look at the plays where he passes to the people and gets fouled, then you look at almost 40 points. So you have to turn him into a score instead of a, instead of a facilitator because that's, that, that's what he does. He's the engine. NC Central is going to want to slow the pace a little tonight. Here comes C.J. Kaiser, the Wichita State transfer, back after missing two games with an ankle injury. Quickly the other way. Parker catch and shoot. Three not there in the first rebound for Jabri Blunt, who might be the favorite for MEAC player of the year. Perkins nearly traveled and was out of control. Two offensive fouls early for NC Central. Yeah, I think it's a case of the nerves. Just when you're in an environment like this, this in a in a road game, in a in a, in a major rival game, sometimes your emotions are running high. The emotions will probably calm down to the first media, but that's why they're playing so out of control right now. Parker, another lob. This one for Ronald Jackson. 
And the turnaround good by Haygood, the grad transfer from Youngstown State. Full court pressure now. Marking Perkins. Kaiser. Skip pass, four turnovers early on for the Eagles. Very good setting the screen for Langley. Gets it back. Strong to the basket and a 6-0 run by a t to open up. Hey, that's a good sign for this a t team. Devin Haygood has struggled the last two games. For him to get four quick, easy points, it's a great sign for a t Perkins nearly lost it again. Now Devin Palmer driving to the basket, nearly walked. Mm. Blocked from behind by Jackson. Three on the way, in and out the follow by Andre Jackson, working at both ends. You can tell a and came to play. They are fired up and ready. An 8-0 run to open up at Club Corbett. When we come back, Myron Metcalf will join us to shed some light on a and coaching situation. Happens all the time. Willie Jones is the acting head coach for North Carolina a &T. and Our courtside reporter, Myron Metcalf, has been following this story. Myron, uh, what can you tell us about Willie Jones and the guy he replaced, Jay Joyner? Well, it seems like everyone was surprised by his indefinite suspension for what the school is calling a personnel matter in December. Everyone I've talked to has been pretty tight-lipped about what's next, but Earl Hill, the athletic director, told me that he is awaiting the results of a university review. And until that happens, there won't be any next steps for Jay Joyner. But it sounds as if this is sort of a bit of a mystery on campus. Everyone wants to know what's ahead and why the suspension took place in the first place. Jay Joyner, I reached out to him multiple times. I have not received anything back from him yet. Willie Jones took over before the Illinois game in December. Nine and four is the Aggies acting head coach. Joyner was in his fourth season before the indefinite suspension and as Myron said no word was ever given on why he was suspended. After the timeout by LaBelle Moulton let's see if NC Central can get on the board. C.J. Kaiser in traffic. And a shot no good by Jabri Blunt, the fifth-year senior. And we get a foul underneath. Yeah, Central needs to get the ball to Jabri Blunt down low. A lot of times they like to run that high low with, with Watley Watley and, and Jabri, but they need to get an easy, easy layup from Jabri Blunt because when he gets the ball down low, he's very, very hard to stop. Watley just picked up his second foul. So the ECU transfer to the bench and enter Evan Claiborne, a transfer from Cleveland State, like Jabri Blunt. Ty Graves all over Langley. Now Ronald Jackson trying to go inside to Haygood and a turnover. Kaiser, a lot of dribbling. Claiborne, big finish. Andre Jackson averaging 14 a game in conference play. Kicks to Ronald Jackson. A three is good. You mentioned Jackson in the open. He's averaging a double-double on the season. Yeah. Ronald Jackson is somebody who, like we talked about earlier, might be one of the best players in this conference. 
has definitely made a huge stride in this game and has led this a t team to the record that they have now. Here come the Aggies again. Langley to Parker. Cash! Nine points now for NCA and T off of NC Central turnovers. Kaiser. And a rebound by Jackson. Langley is just so in control. So in control. Plays at his own pace at all times. Foul on Ty Graves, who made stops at BC and St. Louis before coming to NC Central. Graves marking Langley. Parker again. Offensive rebound. Jackson and the putback. Right now it just seems like Central is, is not locked in. Seems like they are not. They are not, they did not come ready to play. And I know Coach Moden at this next time out is going to get into his guys because this is not central basketball. Blunt misfires, rebound Andre Jackson. Great feed, Langley to Ronald Jackson. You're watching the maestro run this orchestra to perfection. And I love watching Langley play. I'm a huge fan because he's always in control, as you mentioned earlier, and this kid finds the open guy at all times, plays the right way. Not too many times you find basketball players who know how to play true basketball, and that's what he does. Who does he remind you of? I mean, he reminds me of a few guys. The first guy that comes to mind, he's not nearly as athletic, but John Morant, as far as vision. Blunt will go to the line. When you average 13 rebounds per game in conference, you must be boxed out. And this time, he was not boxed out. Ronald Jackson, that's what he does. Cam Langley, one of the best passes into Ronald Jackson. That's, they're just putting on a clinic right now, honestly. When you have a player as unselfish as Langley who makes the extra pass, and gets guys easy looks. What, what does that do for the rest of the team? It just gives you confidence because you know whenever you're open, at all times your point guard is going to find you. I was a shooting guard. I didn't play point guard. So the shooting guard, one of the biggest things I look for is a point guard who can give me easy buckets and always hit me on time, on target when I'm open. Because when you're open, that's when you feel the most confidence. If you know your point guard is going to find you, the percentages go up, the percentages get higher, and you become a better basketball player. Pretty good one at the free throw line in Jabri Blunt. He is one of the leading candidates for Conference Player of the Year. His dad is former Steelers great and pro football Hall of Famer Mel Blunt. One of the best DBs in the history of the NFL and part of that great steel curtain. And if you watch Blunt, there is certainly a football flavor to his game. Man, that still curtain was way before my time. Way before. <laughs> Jackson again. Six straight buckets made by North Carolina A&T. Mike Melvin, number one in black into the game for NC Central. Graves, he's got the green light. Offensive rebound, Claiborne, who stepped out of bounds. It's basketball. There is the great Mel Blunt, Hall of Famer, and dad of Jabri Blunt, the fifth year senior who began his career at Cleveland State. Go through the annals of football and hard pressed to find too many ball hawking DBs better than Mel Blunt. Langley, and he's able to draw the foul. Jabri Blunt, as you can see, first in points, second in steals, 
fourth in rebounds, shooting 55 to the field. More than half of his shots are going in. And this kid is a special player for this Central team. Fred Cleveland inbound. Cleveland, the 5'10", 155-pound freshman out of Chicago. He's had some big moments for NCANT this season. That is off of Langley. And they say he touched it first, so a backcourt violation. One thing my coach always told me when I was playing, early leads mean nothing. It's 20 to 4. Central will get back into this basketball game because early leads mean nothing. This game is too long, and they will make shots, and they'll get back into the game. Right now, they just didn't come prepared. They got off to a slow start. What's the line? It's basketball. Everybody makes a run. Everybody makes a run. Basketball is a game of runs. Sometimes some people's runs just keep going and don't stop. <laughs> some people's runs stop really quickly. But basketball is a game of runs, and you should see Central make a run in a minute. Melvin. Now Graves. Blunt in the high post. Rayborn muscling inside, and he travels. NC Central's Lavelle Moten has an inspiring story. He gave a TED Talks about it. He'll enlighten us with his coaching philosophy when we come back. You leave. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Step up with Boost Mobile and get a super reliable, super fast network. And in part by Sheba, what cats want. That was the line to get into the Corbett Sports Center. All Club Corbett is missing is velvet ropes and a bouncer, but they've got Lavelle Moulton. He's the visiting coach from NC Central, an inspiring story from his TED Talks, his life philosophy. And I just looked him dead in his face and I said, um, basketball is a game. Games are meant to be fun. Ain't no fun in losing, so you might as well win. <laughs> And the context there was when he was interviewing for the NC Central head coaching job, he was asked, what is your philosophy? And those words that you just heard, they were from his grandma, who means so much to him. And she is really the subject of that TED Talks. It was his grandma who told him that when he was just a kid. And he said, I really didn't have an answer, so I went with what grandma taught me. But there is a lot of truth in what you just heard. So there's, there's a lot of truth. As we see Langley with another great pass, but there's a lot of truth in that. Basketball is not fun when you're losing. And, I mean, if somebody would have told me that answer in the interview, that might be my guy, because I like that. He wants to win. He cares about winning, cares about building a culture. As you can see, that's what he does. Three straight NEAC titles. That's winning. He does not want to. He wants to have fun, pretty much, like, like his coach said. Yeah, the name of the TED Talks was my grandma's basketball truth. Nice move by Blunt. Myron. Well, you know, I had a chance to spend the week with the North Carolina Central team, learn a lot about Coach Moten. Uh, one of the things he mentioned in that TED Talk was he made his team play a game of musical chairs when he first arrived. And the numbers went down to 8, 6, 1. He played their favorite song. And when he got down to the last guy, he said, congratulations, you're the winner. And everyone seemed sort of surprised. Okay, yeah, we won a game of musical chairs. But then Coach Moten said, listen, what do you think the game's going to be like when there are a million guys who are trying to get into the NBA at only 35 spots? That was the lesson there, and those are the kinds of lessons that Coach Moten is always trying to instill in this group of young men. Yeah, I don't think people realize, take it from a guy who was just in these seats last year. I just got done playing college basketball. People don't realize how hard it actually is to make the NBA, let alone how hard it is to play overseas. People don't realize there's not that many spots, and that is, when I mean, you really do the math and you look at the numbers, it's almost impossible. And it's, it's even more impossible to, to, to play in college basketball in, at the Division I level. It's very hard, and anybody who can do it, I mean, it's just respect to anybody. Quay Parker draws the foul. Well, speaking of the NBA, you saw the All-Star break. Finally, a great fourth quarter in that All-Star game. Hunt defense, block shots. 
But they go at it for real again in games that count in the standings on Friday. Nuggets, Thunder, and then Zion and the Pelicans against the Blazers. And speaking of NBA All-Stars, one in the house, Bam Adebayo, who is from just up the road in High Point. A guy, Bam, also won the skills contest. Hey, he did his thing in that. Held it down for the big man. He did. Yo, know, back to your point, though, about the lesson from musical chairs. When most guys come out of high school, doesn't matter who they are, they all think they're going to the league, right? I mean, that, that's everybody's mindset. If you look at you look at the guys who are top 100, everybody in the top 100 thinks that they are going to the NBA. And that was you at one point. Yeah, I'll end up being number 36, but, you know, I thought I was going to the NBA, but then you look at the guys who aren't even top 100. The guys after that, they still think they're going to the NBA. And I feel like so many times it's the people in your ear giving you a false reality, giving you false expectations, and it doesn't add up. So then once you realize you're not going to the NBA, that's when it leads to bigger things like depression or, or mental health issues because you feel like you failed everybody's expectations of you. Foul on Fred Cleveland. I would imagine, though, on an internal level, that's got to be a hard realization because you mm -hmm. probably dreamt of that your whole life. Yeah. And here you are, you went to a school like Baylor playing yeah. high major, college basketball against the best. Yeah. That should be a goal and that should yeah. be a dream. You don't want that reality check. I mean, too, but for me, it was more of my heart disease preventing me. But you know, for a lot of guys, it's just work ethic. It's just not being there fully dealing with distractions, just a whole lot of things that goes into play that, you know, being a pro is more than just getting buckets and, and scoring on the basketball court. Being a pro stems from what you do off the court. Do you go to class? Do you treat people the right way? You know, how, how, how good of a person are you? That's what really the NBA is being about. Those guys handle their business and they take everything seriously. Meanwhile, Devin Palmer, who's been one of the better three-point shooters for NC Central, and just picked up his second foul. He'll stay in the game, however. And at the free-throw line, the sophomore from Amityville in Long Island, Tyrone Lyons. That is uh, the same Amityville where the Amityville horror movie comes from. Yeah, see, I don't watch scary movies, so I know nothing about that. <laughs> oh. well, how about C.J. Kaiser? Cold blood in the Wichita State transfer. Hey, welcome back, C.J. Kaiser. That's what this central team needs, especially right now being down 12. He missed the last two, but was coming off back-to-back 20-point -back games prior. Great feet inside, and Haygood misfires. Perkins, the outlet ahead. And nearly stepping out of bounds was Fennell. Ooh. Yikes. Missed opportunity in transition. C.J. Kaiser. Back-to-back 20-point -back games before he got hurt. That's what he does. He gets buckets, and they will need his buckets tonight if they want to win in the dog pound. Packed house here at Club Corbett. One of the best home court advantages in all of Division I. And you've gotten a glimpse so far. You'll get more of a glimpse as this game goes on. As we get a foul on Hager in his second. In for Hager, number 21, Ronald Jackson. Quiet now. That is temporary, though. Let them make another highlight dunk or a highlight play, and this place will erupt. There's Perkins. He is on pace to become the all-time assist leader at NC Central. Poked away by Lions. And now Jackson ahead of the pack. Parker drops it off to Jackson, who follows his shot. Second effort good. He just plays at such a high motor. You saw he missed the shot, got it right back because his motor is so high. And that's that's what a lot of people, and I talked to the, the, the assistant coach at Morgan State, Coach Marion, and he said that out of all the me, top MEAC players, he thinks that Ronald Jackson might have the most pro potential. Yeah, meanwhile, Blunt got poked in the eye, it appears. 
So play was stopped. One of the things Willie Jones told us about Ronald Jackson, he gets his points, and you don't have to run offense for him. Yeah, and that that's credit to the high motor that he has because coaches love guys who can score and you don't have to draw up something for them. So then when you're not drawing up plays for them, they're still content because they know that they're going to get still get their buckets. Because there's a lot of guys out there that if you're not drawing plays for them, they don't want to play for you. <laughs> <laughs> and and coaches love guys like Ronald Jackson who can know their role and still work within their role and not try to overstep their boundaries or overshadow other people. You were never one of those guys, though. Never. <laughs> never one of those guys. Super Tuesday tomorrow, Purdue, Wisconsin. Big Ten battle of teams trying to stay off the bubble. That's at 7. And then at 9, it's Kentucky and LSU and Baton Rouge. LSU starting to slip a little bit. Lost to Vandy in a blowout. Lost to Alabama over the weekend. Kaiser, shot blocked. Lyon snatches it out of the air, and here comes Cleveland. a and has cooled off after the hot start. Jackson grazed the rim on a long three. Palmer. Back iron. Cleveland to the rebound. Aggies push. You can tell how much they miss Langley, who's not on the floor right now. Yeah, because Langley just sets up offense for everybody. Right now, Fred Cleveland is more of a score. He's like the opposite of Langley. Langley's a pass first. And that is what Langley does. He is able to facilitate for others. Kaiser picks up his second foul, the ninth team foul already on NC Central. You leave. Oh, With the recent announcement that North Carolina AT is going to join the Big South, I had a chance to talk to Earl Hilton, the athletic director, about this major move for this university. Out of the MEAC into the Big South, he said, look, this isn't just a basketball move. This is about every sport at this institution benefiting from the resources that are available to the schools in the Big South. That's why the move was made. However, there are certainly people who are attached to this league and this rivalry you're watching right now who are wondering if we're going to see the last of North Carolina a and against North Carolina Central. What happens with the MEAC overall in the future? A number of concerns outside of North Carolina, North Carolina A&T about what this move means for everybody involved. Now the MEAC already lost Hampton a few years ago. Savannah State dropped down to Division II last year. Free throw no good by Andre Jackson. That's one of the big weaknesses for NCA and T. They get to the free throw line a lot, but 61% as a team. This is what North Carolina A&T's chancellor had to say, Harold Martin. The move makes great sense for our student athletes, for our fans, and for our bottom line. We will always have a place in our hearts for the MEAC, and we look forward to what the new conference will make possible for the Aggies. But, uh, Myron, you alluded to it. What does this move mean for the future of the MEAC? Well, I think mean, that's the big question because obviously North Carolina a and uh, is an important part of this league. I think that's what a number of people affiliated with this league are wondering and questioning. You see the atmosphere here. It's hard to recreate this without North Carolina Central and North Carolina a and I talked to one member of the MEAC, uh, an alum here, and he said, look, we're concerned about what this all means going forward. I, mean, I just feel like that, I mean, I feel like it's a good move for definitely for the program going into a bigger conference. But like you said, you, you miss out on rivalry games like this. But I still think if I'm them, I'm still working North Carolina Central into my schedule every single year. And honestly, the game might be even better because instead of it being twice a year, it's only one time a year. So the game might be better. Three shots coming for Ronald Jackson, and C.J. Kaiser picked up his third foul. Uh, Myra, the other aspect here is that identity politics is at play in the sense that 
Uh, the MEAC is, is an HBCU conference. Yeah. And uh, football does drive the bus. North Carolina a and has been very successful on the football front, winning HBCU championships recently. Uh, you lose some of that, and you lose some of the identity of black college football and black college basketball. Yeah, I think when you hear about Power 5 expansion, uh, this is the end result. This is the domino effect. When a league like the Big South comes in and they invite a North Carolina a and a number of smaller leagues are in this situation where they're trying to figure out if we don't have our anchors, and North Carolina a and is certainly an anchor for the MEAC, what do we do next? What's our next move, and how do we survive? Returning for the Eagles, number three, Ty Graves, and number 10, Evan Claiborne. Ty Graves and Evan Claiborne back in for NC Central. Ronald Jackson, one of the better free throw shooters on this A&T team. And one of the fascinating things is Jackson's a 78% free throw shooter. The other four starters, all 55% and below. Man, if that's my team, that's all we're doing. We're not leaving practice where everybody makes 10 free throws in a row at least. 61% as a team, bottom 10 in Division One. Triple team down low, and Palmer sneaks it through. I remember, matter of fact, I got that from Coach Drew. We had, used to have a thing, if you didn't shoot a certain percentage from the free throw line, you're, you're part of the free throw club. You can't walk out the gym until you make at least 10 free throws in a row. And fortunately, I was never in the free throw club. But you don't want membership <laughs> in. But some of, some of my teammates would be in the gym for an hour after practice trying to make these free throws. <laughs> and we get a foul. Foul charge to number 11, Tyler May. First foul on Tyler May. Again, a reminder, Super Tuesday tomorrow. Purdue and Wisconsin uh, both looking to stay off the bubble. That game at 7, then it's Kentucky and LSU at the Maravich Center at 9. They played a thriller when they played earlier this month. Not a good pass there by Palmer. It's intercepted. Now Langley back in. There's the lob, and Parker could not hang on to it. This place was ready to erupt. Graves drive and kick. Back to Graves. Open for three. Way off. That's good basketball, though. Active hands down low. And a foul on the floor. Palmer was part of the scuffle for the loose ball. The foul's going to be on Lions. Look at the top six in the SEC for a while. You thought maybe LSU, maybe Auburn, right? Uh, Kentucky back on top as usual. Yeah, Auburn and with just Auburn not being ranked right now is that's crazy. One time they thought people thought they were the best team in America. South Carolina, meanwhile, has made a late push over yeah. in the SEC. Frank Martin before the season was telling folks that his Gamecocks team this year is more talented than the one that went to the Final Four a few years ago. So, interesting story. I was a product of them going to the Final Four. They beat us in the Sweet 16. We were actually number one in the country that year, and we matched up with them. It was just a bad matchup. Sandarius throwing well. Had nightmares about that guy, but it's okay. I forgive him. But they, they ruined our chances of going to the national championship, which I think the team I was on that year could have done that had we not ran into Frank Martin in, in the Gamecocks. Yeah, they did a very good Baylor team. They beat Duke as well yep. on their run to the yep. Final Four. Willie Jones just called a timeout. Quick little photo bomb there. Did you catch that? <laughs> You know, I've been to a lot of places to play basketball. I've been to Allen Fieldhouse in Kansas, and I've been to Wichita State, and I, I really feel like this might be <laughs> one of the best atmospheres I've, I've ever seen in college basketball. And I'm not just saying that because we're here. This really is, like, lit. Well, just wait now. Langley the basket.
when Langley's on the floor, everything comes easier for this offense. Cameron Langley, we talked about him a little bit, makes the game easier. Little Rajon Rondo type feel the way he's dishing out dimes, but that is what this young man does. One of the most underrated point guards in all of college basketball, a name that you need to know because this guy can play basketball. Well, this is a tough spot. Jabri Blunt just picked up his second foul, mm. so he goes to the bench. That's NC Central's best player. Still four and a half to go in this first half, and the Aggies looking to extend a 17-point oh. lead, and Jackson fires up this crowd a little more. That's the high motor we continuously talk about. His ability to get off the ground like a pogo stick, his jump is so quick, and that translates over to the professional style of basketball. 16 points. In the first half for Ronald to Jackson, he's outscored the opposition by himself. Palmer's three rims out. Lions hits the assist by who else? Cam Langley. North Carolina Central. Aggie Nation makes some noise. Ronald Jackson. Oh, you missed? Well, I'm here to clean it up. Rides up for the duck. Quick bounce. Ronald Jackson, everybody. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic tonight. Corbett Sports Center, officially known or I should say unofficially known as Club Corbett. They've got a DJ in-house. There was a ton of pregame hustle and flow, and uh, in-game, Cameron Langley has been providing the fireworks on the floor. Cam Langley, we just keep talking about him, but you really can't talk about him enough. We need to talk about him more, honestly, because people need to know this kid's name. This kid is talented. He has a skill. Passing is a skill. But it's not something that everybody can do. Trust me, I know I played with a few guys who couldn't do it. Both of these teams are teams capable of winning the MEAC, and, and that's an automatic qualifier to the NCAA tournament. And if Cam Langley and the Aggies were to represent the MEAC in the NCAA tournament, we get a foul. It's on Darius Maddox. If a team like NCANT would get into the NCAA tournament with a point guard like Langley, they become dangerous because yeah. we know guards will march. Yeah, for sure. If this team could get into the NCAA tournament, like you just said to your point, Cam Langley, whenever you're playing with against a point guard like him, he makes he become like scouting becomes hard because you don't know. Like you, you can scout plays, but with Cam Langley's on the court, there's no set play. Whenever he gets into the to the paint, he's going to always locate the the, the, the open person. So playing against a team like him a team with his you know ability is going to be hard especially for any team to match up especially with a year of upsets in a year where anybody could beat anybody again the aggies are probably looking at a 15 16 seed yeah. in that range so highly unlikely but again in this type of season where we expect march to be madder than usual <laughs> that's a guy you don't want to play no nah. i definitely would not want to see him just because of his passing ability and he can also score. We keep forgetting about that, but the kid can get to the cup. He doesn't shoot the three well, but he can get to the cup and he can score. Palmer traveled. Now, speaking of upsets in the tournament, the MIAC has had a few. 1997, Compton State as a 15 seed stunned South Carolina. Remember Hampton taking down Iowa State? That was in 2001. That was the Marcus Pfizer team. And then Norfolk State over Missouri eight seasons ago. The three is good. Fred Cleveland, the freshman, he's a streaky three-point shooter. Largest lead for A&T. 
It's something we definitely didn't expect to see. No. Open three, deposit slip for Nicholas Fennell. That's how you know they're struggling. Nick Fennell does not score the ball and is primarily a defensive player. And he just banked in the three. He's now struggling for buckets right now. He's now 5 of 26 from three. And that's one way to get back into the game. Fast break basket by Perkins, who averages seven a game. Now they're making Langley give it up in the backcourt. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's smart. I think the how you defend a guy like like Langley is you make him when he comes up to pick and roll, you don't help. You allow him to go get the bucket, go allow him to score. Because if Langley scores 20 and doesn't have maybe have like one or two assists, then you win. Now when he gets like 12, 13 plus 12 assists, then that's when you're losing. Rough possession for Cleveland, who missed badly on a long three, and then. Nowhere close on the layup. Langley has numbers. Uh -oh. Oh. oh, looking for the trailer. It wasn't there. And we get a foul, a pushing foul. Uh-oh. On Fennell. Now they're going to separate the players. Foul charge to number 24, Nicholas Fennell. And that spot, if you're the trailer, you've got to know he's giving it up, right? You, I mean, I'm surprised that nobody, honestly, that's me. I'm going to get the ball. <laughs> it's going to be two guys going to get the ball instead of two guys looking like, oh, who's he passing to? No, sir, I'm getting that ball, and I'm going to get a bucket. Lions is 71% free throw shooter. The Aggies have led by as many as 24, one out of two, and it will stay with A&T. That's none other than who else? Ronald Jackson making plays that he shouldn't make because of his motor and because of his knack for the basketball. Langley and Jackson have been the dynamic duo. Langley's got six helpers. Jackson, 16 points, six rebounds here in the first half. Langley, the lob for Jackson on cue. Man, we, we just keep talking about it. He keeps showing us what we're talking about. He gets to the creases. Now, all that was a great pass. That's unacceptable. That's just bad defense. You know he's not going to shoot the three. Back up. Do not let him get to the paint because when he gets to the paint, chaos is created. That's bad defense by Central. Central needs to wake up in the, during his halftime. Now we get a foul. A one and one coming for NC Central. Great pass by Langley, but that's just too easy. You're just allowing a guy, one of the best passers in the country, to just get into the creases and find up with people. That's never going to be good for you. And in this building, those are juice points. Those count a little more. Yeah, because when, when you make plays like that, the crowd gets into it, the crowd starts going crazy. Then it's harder to play. It's harder to focus, harder to hear your coach, which makes it harder for you to go down and execute. So you cannot allow those plays. You cannot allow guys like Cam Langley to dominate you and get where he wants. When you played at Baylor, who was the guy that when he made a basket, it was instant momentum in home games? For our team, for the other team. For your team. Mm. My last year, I think it was probably myself or Makai Mason. I think one of us, we, we hit a shot. Makai scored a lot. I scored, but I didn't score as much as Makai. So everybody was kind of used to seeing Makai score. But I think if I hit a three or something like that, the crowd would get more into it just because they like me as a person. But <laughs> <laughs> don't got it, people like me. <laughs> About a 10 second differential between game clock and shot clock. Cleveland. Back to Langley. Five to shoot. Three from the wing. Jackson keeps it alive. Battle for the rebound. And it belongs to NC Central. Ten seconds to go in this opening half. Aggies by 20. Lavelle Moulton was worried about tempo. He said, we have to dictate pace of play. And Willie Jones told us the opposite. 
He said if we can run and push, we're in control and so far advantage to Willie Jones's team. Yeah, if I'm Coach Moten in this half, I got to wake my guys up. I got to get them going because we're not going outside like this. Palmer, no good. Rebounded by Langley, and he'll dribble out the clock in the first half. 14 turnovers, 20 points for NC Central. Cameron Langley at seven assists to Jackson. Close to a double-double already. Aggies by 20. Big Monday presented by Boost Mobile. Big first half for North Carolina a &T. The blue and gold marching machine. Just part of the acoustics here at Club Corbett. You got a DJ. King McClure is dressed for the occasion. I should have worn the club attire. <laughs> you look good, though. I like, I, like, I like the blazer. You like the blazer. A little out of place, baby. <laughs> NC Central was out of place. They got clubbed in that first half. How did the Eagles get back into this game? Well, what we saw in the first half is not Central basketball. They didn't do anything right. But it starts on the defensive end. They must get stopped because right now they can't score. Their offense will be challenged right now. They must let their defense turn into offense, and they'll get back in this game. Now let's check in with Myron Metcalf in the heart of the dog pound. I can barely hear what you guys are saying because I'm here in the middle of the dog pound. One of the best fan bases in America. This is why there's such a great atmosphere, a great place to play. Because these people go crazy every time the North Carolina system comes in. One of the best atmospheres in college basketball, fellas. I think I'm transferring to North Carolina a and after this. Hey, I should have went there too. <laughs> and we have heard the last of Myron Metcalf. It's been fun knowing you, Myron. <laughs> He's in the VIP section now. He's not leaving. Cameron Langley to an open Andre Jackson. Bounces back to Langley. He thought about it. He'll fire off the mark. That's not his game. Just 3 of 13 from 3 entering play. Yeah, that's not really a strong suit, I think. That's the next level to his game. He's such a great passer, such a great leader. He needs to be able to get a consistent jump shot. He can get that. That takes his game to a whole nother level. Only a junior, still has another year. Parker lost it. It comes back to Jackson. Ronald Jackson now down low. Ronald Jackson, 18 points, seven rebounds in the first half. And he's been doing a lot of that playing above the rim. Right now, it looks like Central doesn't even want to play. There's no way you get beat on a 50-50 ball, you give up another offensive rebound, and then you give up a wide open lob to a guy. First, they need to get out the zone. Second, they need to wake up and play. They act like they don't even want to be out there right now. Well, that basket is good. It's to make it 42-22. Kaiser. A good at the other end. Comes back to Andre Jackson. How many times has Ronald Jackson caught one of those lobs and gone in for an easy dunk? Four? At least. I mean, it's too many times. That's just unacceptable defense from the Central team. Oh, there you go again. Hey, good. Just couldn't finish it. Able to recover it, and now a chance for a three-point play. Cam Langley, a name you need to know to one of his potential MEAC players of the year, Ronald Jackson. That's, that's just bad defense. There's no ball pressure on Langley. You're allowing him to see the full court. And then the big man, I don't know what he's doing right now. Central needs to wake up, and clearly they have not woken up in this first media. Yeah, nearly a lane violation, and Haygood hits the free throw. Myron, you talked to the coaches. What did you find out? Yeah, Nick's when uh, Coach Moan walked by me, I said, what did you tell your team at halftime? He said, I told him that I can't coach fear. He said, these guys are scared, and there's not a whole lot that I can do about that. He just seemed really frustrated by the fact that they just haven't had the energy he anticipated coming into this game. That is definitely a true statement. Interesting story. My freshman year, going into Allen Fieldhouse, never, ever, ever seen an environment like that. First conference game. I go into the game. We're already down by 20. The place is rocking. It's going crazy. I didn't want to be out there. Like, literally, I, I was, like, literally, me and my other freshman counterpart, Jake Lindsey, we were like, Coach, what do you want us to do? We're down by 20. The place is going crazy. 
and that's what it means. You can't coach fear. You have to go out there and just give it your all, and not not just that, but go out there and make plays. Because eventually, once you start making plays, everything will start coming to you. Let the game come to you. But right now, he's right. You you can't coach fear, and not even fear. You, you can't coach effort. Not even play, playing regular defense. Shots aren't going to fall every game, but your defense is something that cannot go up or down. It has to be consistent. And NC Central's been a pretty good defensive team most of the season. Langley says, okay, I'll try to do it. Another rebound by Jackson, who's tied up. And a foul on the fourth. That's Blunt. That's his third. And that is three on Jabri Blunt. And that's been part of the problem. He got in foul trouble in the first half. Had to come out of the game with about four and a half minutes to go. Now picks up number three at the 17-32 mark, but he'll stay in. Well, had he blocked out, he wouldn't even pick up the foul because he would have had the ball. And look, that's just way too easy. Tell you what, if Ronald Jackson wins MIAC Player of the Year, uh, he owes Cameron Langley a nice dinner. <laughs> Maybe a few. <laughs> 22 points, seven rebounds for Jackson. Langley's got 10 helpers. Kaiser with the three. He's got 10, and he's really been the lone source of offense for NC Central. Yeah, it seems like he's the only player that came to play. That's not scary, like 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 Coach said. Another foul on NC Central. This time Perkins is second. Three team fouls. They got into the bonus early in the first half. Ronald Jackson setting the screen for Andre Jackson. They tried it again. Now on the run out, Perkins drops it off to Blunt. I might have gotten away with something there. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting move by Perkins, but Revs didn't call it. Parker. And again, the Aggies just quicker to all the 50-50 balls. Langley down low, puts it in. You're right, the effort hasn't been there, the hustle hasn't been there. It's not what we expect from NC Central, which is a hard-nosed defensive team. Yeah, like I, like I said, mentioned earlier, you, know, you, you, you can coach X's and O's. You, can, you, know, you can't really control if shots are going to go in, but defense is something that you should never be able to question. That should always, defense and effort are two things that you should always bring when you step on this court. NC Central was oh. number one in defensive efficiency in the MEAC entering the game. Palmer draws the foul. Willie Jones' team rolling at home. What's in your wallet? With King McClure and Myron Metcalf and Ishrop, Willie Jones, the interim head coach, the acting head coach for North Carolina a &T. Jay Joyner has been suspended indefinitely. This is now Jones' 14th game as head coach. Myron, you've been following this story. What's changed since Jones took over? You know what? Not much in terms of who he is as a coach. He told us before the game that he didn't change a whole lot about his approach, his demeanor. He wanted to make sure the guys knew who he was. But one of the things he did emphasize is that he said, look, if you guys give me 90 minutes, we don't have to practice for two hours or two and a half hours. I'll trust you if you give me that hard work. And it seems like his approach, his scheme, after Jay Jordan was suspended, is working for this group. What are the chances Jay Joyner coaches this team again? You know, in a conversation with Earl Hilton, it sounds like the next step is the university review process, and they'll decide from there. So that answer is one that we don't know. But I can tell you this, the longer this thing goes, the less likely it seems we'll see him again. Yeah, it's been a, a situation and a suspension without a lot of details. No reason has been given for Jay Joyner's suspension. All we know is that he's been suspended indefinitely. It started in late December. Willie Jones has been the acting head coach. And now listen, up until about a week ago, this Aggies team was 8-1 in conference. They lost two straight entering today. Uh, but those were road games in conference. Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting story, but the team did not let, as we see a three by Quay Parker, the team did not let the coach's suspension change who they are and change how they play. 
Willie Jones has done a great job with this team taking over. Kaiser, hello. Now, it's just me. But I know you got a nice dunk, but you can't look at the guy and, and, and put your finger to his mouth when you're down by 21. I, I mean, that's just unacceptable. You can't celebrate when you're down by 21. You celebrate losing? Like, what, what you celebrate? I mean, you can, but it's not going to go over well. Probably with your own team as much <laughs> as the other team. <laughs> like, good dunk. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go out there and dunk. But what you're really supposed to do is win a basketball game. Get back on defense. Hey, good. And the rebound by Palmer. Now Perkins. NC Central picking up the pace a little. Palmer for three. No good. He did not attempt a three in non-conference, but he's actually been a pretty good three-point shooter in league play. Watley corrals the rebound. The East Carolina transfer. Perkins around Parker. Drops it off to Blunt. One following his shot in there with the three fouls from the corner out there up ahead to Haygood finger roll is good you get offense from Haygood it's a bonus that is a bonus because he has struggled the past two games so anything you get from him offensively is a good sign for this team Perkins strong to the rim Ronald Jackson crumbles to the floor. Meanwhile, Haygood is leaving the floor at the other end, bleeding from the chin, so he is going to the locker room for treatment. of 11 from the field for Jackson. Came into this game second to the conference and rebounding. Kid plays above the rim. We've seen that today. Does Taekwondo. We were talking about eating healthy earlier. Jackson is on a plant-based diet. A plant-based diet. So, I'm not a nutritionist, but what does that consist of? I would imagine foods that have uh, a plant base. But like, what, what, what is an example of the food? <laughs> I can't even think of what, like, like lettuce or uh, like, like spinach. I don't like eat healthy enough oh. <laughs> to really know that, but, but thanks. Because <laughs> me, I would never, ever, 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 ever eat a plant-based diet. Tell you what, I mean, he looks good. It's a, it's a chiseled physique. No, he, he does. I mean, credit to him because he's strong. Cause, you know, I like fried chicken too much. You know? <laughs> Catfish. I go to I go over to my grandma's house a little too much and eat, eat, eat a little too good over there. Kaiser's got a dozen to lead NC Central. They stare at a 22-point deficit. First of two meetings this season. NC Central has been the team to beat in this conference. No good by Watley. They've been in the NCAA tournament four of the last six years as Langley beats the D down the floor. And NC Central has won this league three years in a row. And this is one of these leagues where it's a one-bid league. So it's what happens in the conference tournament. Three by Graves is good. Ty Graves began his career at Boston College was starting as a freshman and then uh, supplanted in the starting lineup by some guy named Kai Bowman. Ooh. A foul on the drive by Cleveland. Don't forget about Norfolk State in this league. They're at 7-2 in conference, but their two losses have come to Central and a &T. Yeah, credit to Coach Marriott at Morgan State, one of my guys. He's doing a good job over there, getting a lot of transfers. They actually got Troy Baxter. Uh, from UNLV. But the MIAC is really competitive. The MIAC is a really good league that not too many people talk about. Three no good by Lions. And we get a foul. Langley and Perkins collide. 
As we told you, NC Central has won four of the last six tournament titles, including three in a row. Hampton uh, won it in 2016 and 2015. They have since moved on from the league, leaving for the Big South in 2017. North Carolina A&T last made the NCAA tournament in 2013. But it's impressive. Again, NC Central is a team that if they have Randy Miller, different story. He was first team all conference last year. Top returning scorer as blunt is fouled. Tyler May picked up the foul. Andre Jackson gives Langley a breather. 11 assists, 7 rebounds, 7 points for Langley, who is flirting with a triple-double. Let's see right now. That's a goal will, 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 will the offense change now that Langley is not on the court? Our Myron Metcalf spent some time with NC Central, went on a road trip, took the bus. He has some stories which he'll share when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. To try a big bacon classic today. NC Central logged a lot of miles on the road, especially in non-conference. Our Myron Medcalf uh, joined the Eagles on a road trip. What was that like? Uh, it, it was one of the more interesting and, and fun experiences I've ever had uh, during my career at ESPN. Uh, we went from Wofford to Georgia, back to North Carolina Central, and it was just amazing to see how much work these guys put in on those road trips. Uh, I was amazed by how much they do. These guys were studying on the bus, taking exams. Uh, you had coaches who were watching film on the bus, and then they get off and they practice. They try to find food, fast food joints. Uh, there was a pizza joint that they convinced to keep open late at night, and they all crashed in and got a bunch of pizzas one time. It was just an amazing experience, and I've never been more fatigued, fellas, than I was when I spent a week with that team. I got a lot of respect for guys like you, King, and the work you put in in college basketball. And this group dealt with something last week. Their bus broke down on a trip from Morgan State, and instead of calling a repairman, someone Googled the owner's manual for the bus, and they found a switch to override the system to stop the engine from cutting off. That's how they got back on the road. These guys have to do things like that in order to keep their program going. My guess is a lot of Power 5 schools have never experienced anything close to that. Yeah. To your point, I, I have the utmost respect for programs not in the Power 5 because of what they go through. It, it's not easy to, to, to bus to all the games and to constantly have to do things like Myron just said. That's not easy at all. And on top of that, you have to focus on winning a basketball game. You're trying to get to from one place to the next place because your bus broke down. But then you have to also worry about winning a basketball game. That's not easy. Have the utmost respect for programs who do that. Fourth foul on Kaiser would hit the three. And May completes a three-point play at the other end. Now let's be honest, King. You were telling me before the game, you hated riding the bus, period. Yeah. Charter flights. <laughs> I want leg room. I mean, it's... It's just, it's just a di two different worlds, and that's why I say I have the utmost respect because I, I w I'm not accustomed to that. I've never seen that. And to hear stories like that are something that I, I'm just, like, I, I get blown away. Like, I, I can't fathom having to do that game in, game out. So that's why my respect level for these guys is so high because I've never experienced that. But hearing it does not seem like something you want to, you want to experience. NC Central has logged more than 4,000 miles by bus this season. And Graves splashes down a three. NC Central is one run away from getting within striking distance in the midst of an 11 3 run, but they've got to extend it. They have a coach in Lavelle Moton who doesn't mind being called Grandma's Boy. It's the ultimate compliment. And I told my grandma, I said, Grandma, the light, the light has went off for me. 
I'm going to use this basketball and I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to buy you this big house and get you this nice fancy car. And she looked me directly in my face and she said, I want you to know something. The two most important days of your life is the day that you were born and the day that you figure out why. And when you leave this earth, if people remember you as a basketball player, then you've done a poor job of living. His grandma's advice permeates through Lavelle Moulton. His grandma is alive in Lavelle Moulton. You see that. That was part of his TED Talks, which was called My Grandma's Basketball Truth and life lessons that he learned growing up with his grandmother, who was very much a maternal figure and even a paternal figure for him. He told us his dad left when he was four and his dad's dad had left his father and he wanted to break that cycle. Grandma set such a great example as a role model for Lavelle Moulton. Yeah, I mean, just, you saw the TED talk, but like I mentioned earlier, when we were talking to him before the game, the way he talked on the TED talk is the way he talks in his everyday life. He so, he has so much wisdom. And me as a young guy, I almost didn't want to talk at all because I just wanted to, to listen to him and, and, and gain knowledge because he's a wise, very, very wise man. And the way he talked on that TED talk is how he talks in real life and he, he's somebody who I inspired I, I look up to honestly I got his number afterwards and, and told him that you know you, you you really inspired me I haven't even known you that long but you've inspired me as a man so when NC Central won its first MEAC championship 2014 there was a great shot captured by our ESPN cameras at the end of the game of Lavelle Moulton crying and People asked him, why were you crying when you won that MEAC championship at the end of the game? And he said, I heard my grandma's voice. That was the voice that he heard in that crowning moment. And remember, this was a guy when he took the job, it wasn't like he had universal support. Even though he was an alum and a decorated player, he didn't really have a ton of coaching credentials and head coaching credentials, especially at the major uh, college level and so people were skeptical he made a promise when he was hired he said I'll beat an ACC team within five years of taking the job five years into the job he beat NC State hey he, he delivered on his promise and another thing that stood out to me in the TED talk was when he first got the job that le the that led director basically wanted him to go eat with some people who were not a big fan of the choice to hire him and he told the athletic director that he was not going to do that because he doesn't want to prove anything to anybody and he's not going to please everybody in a sense. He said they talked about Jesus, so of course they're going to talk about him. And that's very true. And he's more wisdom for Coach Moses. How about Floyd Parker, the eraser? Floyd Parker, YouTube sensation showing off his hops right now. Give me that. Now, this is a kid who was a four-star recruit out of high school, went to Tennessee, played in 25 games as a freshman for the Vols. Graves comes up empty. Then went to junior college, Cape Fear, before coming to North Carolina a &T. You know what his Twitter handle is? What? I jump too much. <laughs> I, mean, I used to literally sit there and watch his watch his YouTube videos, watch his YouTube dunks in class. Not a big guy either. He's only six feet tall. Yeah, real short. But his YouTube, his dunks that he used to do were absolutely crazy. And now you watch that free throw by Langley, 54 percent, and that's one of the reasons, one of the criticisms against him, and we're nitpicking. Sometimes he goes to the rim. He can be too unselfish. You wonder if that's part of it because you know you're not a good free throw shooter. Yes, but I think, I mean, I, I just think that that's the next level for his game because when you look at terms of pro potential, he can pass at an elite rate like a pro. He controls the game. He can manage the game, but he just can't shoot. And I think that, that that's going to hinder him from being a pro as we see great hustle on the court. But I feel like that that's what's going to hinder him. If anything hinders his game, that's what hinders his game from taking it to the next level. Parker just picked up the foul. Yeah. 
17 point lead for the Aggies of NC A&T against NC Central. First of two meetings this season. They'll play in Durham on March the 5th. And that arena will be just as charged as it is today. Maybe not as lit as a dog pound, but it'll probably be close for sure. Third foul on May. Now that's the game. It'll be on ESPNU on March 5th, and the MEAC Championship will be on ESPN2 on March 14th. Once we get to the weekend, we're three weekends away from Selection Sunday. Yeah, that doesn't even feel, feel real. But like it's, it flew by super fast this season. Your Baylor Bears looking at a number one seed and potentially the number one overall seed. Right now, they are the consensus best team in the country. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think they're the best team in the country, not just because I went there, but it's true. <laughs> I mean, they have, a, they have a big game this Saturday against Kansas. Uh, that, that'll definitely be able to determine a lot right there what they do on Saturday against the Jayhawks. Yeah, big game. And Kansas is run atop the Big 12. Palmer nearly traveled. And we'll get a reach-in foul on Jackson. 7.44 to go in regulation. North Carolina A&T up big. It's in your wallet. You know, with the move to the big south of North Carolina a &T, one of the concerns is what you see behind me. Will they lose the environment you get from some of these MEAC games in North Carolina Central and North Carolina a &T. That is what some of the alums of this conference are worried about. But you also look at what I did with North Carolina Central on the road with them, going to fast food joints, traveling thousands of miles by bus. North Carolina a &T hopes to avoid that with the move to the Big South. I talked to Athletic Director Earl Hilton, and he said this move is about resources for every program at our university. It's going to help all of us. It significantly will cut down on travel, and the move to the Big South will come next July. So one more season in the MEAC for NC Central, and this is a founding member. It hurts, or I should say NC a and a founding member. And they've had athletic prowess in a number of sports, a renowned track and field program, a women's college basketball, men's college hoops, college football. It's a blow to the MEAC, and it's a blow for uh, the future livelihood of this conference. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you lose a, a power in your conference, that'd be like the Big 12 losing Baylor. Like it's just, it's anytime you lose a, a, power, a, a power in your conference, it definitely is a blow. But NCAA and T, credit to them because you know, that's, that's a smart move. It's a good move for the school and the program. foul is the call on Fennell. Look at the current landscape of the Big South and uh, there is a decidedly Carolina flavor here. Virginia as well with Hampton. And a and will be part of that. In July of 2021. Rare miss for Ronald Jackson, but guess what? He follows his shot. 24 points for Jackson tonight. Blunt for three. Myron. For the game, and he's telling me that he hopes the rivalry remains, even if it's a one-game thing going forward. But I've also talked to 
other members of North Carolina Central who've said they're concerned that North Carolina, Carolina A&T will want this going forward because the ball's kind of in their court. So it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. But I know North Carolina Central hopes to preserve this rivalry. I look at basketball, and when Missouri left Big 12 for the SEC, yeah. well, we had years where we didn't have the border war, which was one of the best rivalries, KU and Missouri, in the Big 12 and in all of college basketball. Yeah, yeah you know, that was one of the, yeah, you're right, that was one of the best rivalries, especially when you look back at days like uh, Phil Pressey, Dallas, Texas native. But that was a great rivalry, and, you know, a lot of people, who, a lot of Kansas fans, a lot of Missouri fans wish that they still had that game. I don't know why they don't do it, but, you know, that would be good for the sport. Now, I believe they've gotten that back, so they have come to Sports Center tonight after Iowa State and Kansas with Kenny Mayne and Michael Leaves. Uh, they'll talk with former Kansas big man Joel Embiid, plus Dwayne Wade talks retirement and family with Rachel Nichols and post-race reactions from the Daytona 500. Cameron Langley, a little lip there coming off the court. We get a timeout with 553. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Step up with Boost and get a super reliable, super fast network. Alongside King McClure and courtside reporter Myron Metcalf, I'm Anish Shroff. For King and I, this has been our first trip here at Club Corbett and the atmosphere, King, we were told, you're gonna see things tonight you've never seen in a basketball game. And somehow that was an undersell. Man, oh man. You know, I've seen a lot of this in high school. This brings me back to my high school days. But at Baylor, you would see none of this at this game. Chip and Joanna weren't dancing in the aisles? <laughs> Not even a little bit. Oh, how about Ronald Jackson nifty move down low? He's got 26. The issue for NC Central here is the margin being what it is, and it was a 20-point game at halftime. You're now forced to play faster. Yeah. That plays into the hands of your opponent. Yeah, because A&T is definitely the faster-paced team, and NC Central likes to take their time. Sometimes you see in past games, they'll run it all the way down to the very last second of the shot clock. So now you're getting out your element. You're, you're not playing central basketball what makes you good now you're trying to play it like you said to the hands of your opponent like like we see so now they're forced to try to get buckets at a quick rate because they're down by so much smooth jumper by graves timeout lavelle moulton it's a 13 point game can nc central conjure up one more run Central stumbled and spilled all over itself coming off the bus. This game was 20 to 4 early on, and that's been a mountain. The Eagles have not really been able to climb all night. They're down 16, 438 to go. It's possible, but that early deficit, that early fear, that early intimidation by the environment. That's been the story of the game. Yeah, it's possible, but if they would have pulled this off, that would be pretty incredible. <laughs> it would be, it'd be a pretty impressive comeback if they were able to pull this off. Now remember, the Aggies are a poor free throw shooting team. Not just a bad free throw shooting team, one of the worst in Division I. And Langley at the free throw line for all his prowess as a passer, only a 54% free throw shooter. You know, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, you know, when you get to the hacker shack, that might not be a bad idea right now to get, get yourself back in the game, get yourself more possessions. Maybe foul Langley. Maybe make him make free throws. Make him become a scorer, which is what the coach talked about in the beginning of the game. Coach Moan talked about they needed to do. But it might not be a bad idea for this Central team to get back in this game. Outside of Jackson, there's really not a good free throw shooter on the floor for North Carolina A&T. 
Kaiser, he's got four fouls. He's been their leading scorer. Graves for three. Parker lost it. It comes to Langley, who is one point, or I should say one rebound now away from a triple-double. I foul right now. I foul right now get the ball back. Kick to the corner. And the three good by Maddox, who was 0 for 7 for three prior. Palmer cannot answer. And Langley has himself his second to triple double of the season. That is impressive. We talked about him, we've been highlighting him, and he's showing he's showing everybody why. Oh, that's tough. And one. And a dagger. Langley, we talked about his passing. Split the defense, draw the contact. Cameron Langley, one of the best point guards out there. You what? As a defense, you are never, ever safe when Cam Langley is on the court. Has a plethora of assists tonight, is finding everybody. He will expose your weaknesses, expose the mismatches, but that's not all he can do. He can get to the rim, he can finish through contact. Not a good shooter, but doesn't need to be when you can pass and get to the cup like he can. Cam Langley has absolutely put on a clinic tonight, and he continues to do so. A triple-double for Langley and a chance to add to it at the free-throw line. Not a bad homecoming. He's a Greensboro kid, so local kid. And at three falls. 73-54. Guarded by Perkins, who's also from Greensboro. That's where we are tonight. The Corbett Sports Center, home of the Dog Pound. Meyer Metcalf has made a lot of friends there tonight. <laughs> Langley blocked. The follow by Maddox and a shot clock violation. Hey, Super Tuesday tomorrow, Purdue and Wisconsin in the rugged Big Ten. And then John Calipari's Kentucky Wildcats go to Baton Rouge to take on LSU. Matchup between two of the top teams in the SEC. They played last year, February 12th, 73-71, a thriller. LSU won that game. Jackson, the turnaround, yes, he's got 28. a on its way, and they're going to improve to 9-3 and three in conference. Central will fall to 8-3, and three, and that means Norfolk State by default. As Homer Simpson said, two greatest words in the English language, default. <laughs> Norfolk State will move into the top spot in the MEAC, but... Both of these teams have the tiebreaker against Norfolk State, and you just get the sense you're going to see a different game when they play in Durham next month, and we may see these two again in the MEAC tournament, possibly the MEAC championship. Yeah, I mean, as great as they're playing, what it ultimately comes down to is one game. One game in the tournament can make or break your season. You can have a great season, but you get to the MEAC tournament, you just got, that's when it has to come out. That's when the best, you have to play your best basketball, take it one game at a time, and really produce then. Yeah, it really doesn't matter what you do in the regular season. You could be conference champion. You could be undefeated if you lose in that conference tournament in a league like the MEAC. Now you're staying home and you're going to the NIT. Alongside King McClure and his Shroff, Myra Metcalf, our courtside reporter. First of two meetings of the season between A&T and NC Central. They'll meet again next month in Durham.
Jackson State Prairie View A&M follows our game. A little swaction on this Monday night. I like what you did there. A little swaction. Swaction. <laughs> Ty Graves, no. And the rebound pulled down by Shane Scruggs. Graves from the outside. And another rebound by Langley, who's got 11 boards to go along with 12 assists and a dozen points. Number three, Shane Scruggs. 14, Harry Maurice. 6'11 freshman from Scotland in the game for the Aggies. Oh, man. And Maddox on the backdoor cut. Lavelle Moten is going to get after his team about what's happened with those lobs and layups at the rim. Man, if I'm Lavelle Moten, tomorrow we are watching this game from start to finish. And running. And doing a little bit of running because of the effort wasn't there. It's not like they missed shots and they got beat. No, no, no. Your effort wasn't there, period. So I'm watching this whole game start to finish, and we're going to get in better shape tomorrow too. Listen, you played college basketball just last year at Baylor. What's the difference when you come off a game where you don't play hard and you don't show effort like NC Central today versus a game where you're right there and, you know, a couple things go awry and you lose close but you played hard? What's the difference in practice? Uh, way, well, a lot. So when you, don't, when you do not play hard, that's when the coach gets his, gets it's the most frustrated. That's when you do extra running. That's when you do a punishment. That that's when your coach is more strict on you. If it's minor tweaks that he can adjust, you'll you'll work on in practice whatever the little areas you need to work on to get better. But when your effort isn't there, that's when practice becomes, you know, just super intense. And that's when basically practice is just something you don't want to be a part of, honestly. Not all losses are treated the same. Yeah, yeah, not all losses are treated the same. And, and good coaches can tell the difference between good losses and bad losses and what they need to fix. But the, I guess the biggest thing for Central is how they respond to this. How are they going to next game? Will this affect them going into next game, or will they just dust this off and have short-term memory loss? Yeah, the next game is against Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, the back end of the schedule, save really for the game against a and and Bethune-Cookman is pretty forgiving for NC Central. We got Maryland Eastern Shore, Howard, South Carolina State, all teams you should beat. Mm -hmm. They'll play again in Durham, but tonight, from the get-go, it was all Aggies back in the win column after dropping two straight. North Carolina Central sees its five-game win streak come to an end. And how fun was it to be here tonight, our first time in this building. Club Corbett lived up to the hype, didn't it? It lived up to the hype and definitely one of the top five places to be in college basketball. That's just bookkeeping. Kaiser finishes with 20, but it's a 17-point win for Willie Jones and North Carolina a &T. Big rivalry game. Today it was all Aggies. Credit to A&T. Came out from the jump. Brought it to him. Central never, ever had an answer. Cam Langley, Ronald Jackson. Story of the night. Two of the best players in this conference. And they showed you why. And one of the best home court advantages, not just in the MEAC, but in all of college basketball. A big reason why A&T got off to that fast start. They use that as a springboard for a win against their biggest rival. Coming up next, it's Jackson State and Prairie View A&M. We say so long from Greensboro. For King McClure and Myron Metcalf, I'm an Ishra.